Hello, um, thanks, uh, Shai. Um, this is Lin Yan Meng. I'm the assistant professor from Baylor College of Medicine and also the lab director from um, Baylor Genetics. So as a lab director overseeing the dry lab at Beta Genetics, we often face the um, bottleneck that we are unable to keep up with the increased case number or faster turnaround time. So um, in today's talk, I'm going to share with you our experience working with uh, using the imaging platform to do um, whole axon analysis in our lab. So what is the bottleneck uh, we are facing? We all know that uh, the cost of genome sequencing has fallen to levels which is no longer the bottleneck for creating clinical reports. However, the cost of dry lab is um, huge compared to the wet lab. This um, is due to the information overload, which we have a um, lot of variants from exon or genome sequencing that need to be interpreted. Um, each of the variants require um, highly trained individuals to um, assess the evidence and then do the judgment. The ACMG and, and provided interpretation guidelines for the variant interpretation. However, um, it has not been um, integrated if uh, we are not using the um, um, AI platform. And uh, lastly, there's always a need to reinterpret um, exon or genome data with, um, to keep up with the new um, published information from the literature. So um, our lab has been working um, with exon sequencing for a very long time. So in this publication um, from 2013, we published in New England Journal of uh, Medicine, we, um, Here's a kind of uh, our workflow at that time. So as you can see for each of the um, exon cases, after filtering, there's about 400 and 700 um, variants left that we need to manually assess each of them, do the decision making, uh, including the variant um, pathogenicity, the phenotype matching, the inheritance, in order to um, decide whether we want to put the variant on report or not. So this is a very manual process and takes a lot of time um, for exon review. So um, in order to increase our work efficiency, about a year ago, uh, we started to working with imaging to look for the options to do a more automated genomic interpretation. So here's um, a high level um, kind of summary of the imaging platform. So they have um, their knowledge database, which is created from the scientific literature and scientific database. And then through machine learning, they uh, evaluate each of the variants using the patient variants, patient phenotype, cross-check with the knowledge database and to form each of the hypothesis. And then um, this process is automated for each of the variants um, for the exome. So before we um, started implementing um, imaging platform in our lab, we would like to know um, whether the platform is doing the job correctly. Um, so we've performed an accuracy study using 180 non-selected positive West cases from our lab. All those cases have been previously manually reviewed by our um, lab scientists and lab directors. And uh, Using uh, imaging platform, we want to measure the ranking of the diagnosis variants and the percentage of the cases that was captured by the top 10 ranked variants. And, and also uh, later we'll talk about our clinical production cohort, including the uh, validation implementation and our experience with the uh, 334 clinical cases. We we'll also look at the automated uh, reanalysis um, possible in the last slide. So our accuracy cohort um, is quite similar with our production cohort. So it is a good representation of, of our real clinical work. The only exception, uh, the only difference between accuracy cohort and production cohort is that um, and the accuracy cohort is all positive cases, while the production cohort is a mixture of positive and the negative cases. And uh, um, both cases, uh, both cohorts have very similar um, phenotype um, presentation as well, with um, the top um, 
phenotypic as the neurologic and neuromuscular presentations. So we first evaluated um, the diagnosis rate from the 123 trio cases. So the graph you see here, the x-axis is the ranking of the diagnosis variant and the y-axis here is the number of cases. Out of 123 trios we look at, it, uh, 109 cases have the diagnosis uh, variant listed as the top, top one uh, variant. And overall 98% of the um, cases have the variants listed in top 10. And um, the diagno our diagnosis um, include all possible um, inheritance patterns, including autosomal dominant de novo and inherited situation, autosomal recessive compound head and homodigous situation, and X-linked de novo and inherited situations. Um, next, we look at uh, singleton cases. As you can see, the performance is a little bit lower compared to trio cases, and this is well um, expected because in singleton cases, we don't have the um, parents' data available for the inheritance model analysis. Um, and we also achieved similar, uh, the, the cases also include similar inheritance patterns. So uh, next we look at uh, those cases that has a relatively lower ranking um, scores, trying to understand uh, the limitation of the AI um, algorithm. So we found out that first um, category of cases are those with incomplete genetic data. So showing here are three cases. Um, the first case is um, patient with autosomal recessive alice Downer syndrome was identified a single heterozygous uh, VUS in the PLOD1 gene, which is ranked at uh, 38. CMA later found uh, axonic deletion in trans. The second case is similar, which has a apparently homozygous uh, variant, pathogenic variant in the uh, RBM8A. Uh, gene. This variant uh, is a little bit tricky because um, by itself, even in homozygous status, it is not penetrant. It is only penetrant with um, in trans with uh, deletion, uh, which is causing the TAR syndrome. So um, CMA later identified the deletion um, and uh, um, solved the case. The last case is a case with um, relatively complex allele, which um, the allele was break into the two cores um, and then may contribute to the relatively low ranking of this case. The next category of cases are those with atypical phenotype information. Um, however, in all cases, we consider them as a diagnosis due to the relatively strong genetic evidence. So for example, the first one is a seven week female which has um, compound heterozygous likely pathogenic variant and a VUS in the um, COC gene, which um, causing the autosomal recessive uh, neurodegeneration disease. Uh, as you can see, the phenotype match score given by the uh, imaging platform is zero in this situation. However, we cannot rule out um, that uh, the patient is still too young to develop the phenotype. A uh, similar situation in the second case, which um, is a pathogenic uh, variant found in the FOXP1 gene. The patient is a newborn um, who has not developed the disease yet. Um, sim uh, again, the phenotype matching score in that case is zero. Um, third case is similar, and then the last case um, is a likely pathogenic variant in a, a genome not unknown significance there's only two publications uh, indicating for autosomal spectrum, I'm sorry, autism spectrum disorder at that time. And therefore, um, we think that may contribute to the ranking. We also look at um, the possibilities of the platform to do the due diagnosis. Uh, in our cohort, there are three cases that has definitive due diagnosis. And in each of the cases, um, the uh, AI platform is able to rank both of the diagnosis variants at high level. So as a summary to the accuracy study, 
um, we found that the automated analysis is able to rank diagnosis variant at top 10 for 98% of the trio cases, 91% of the proband cases, and overall in the entire cohort, um, 90, 96%. There are a couple of factors that are kept can affect auto-analysis that include um, incomplete genetic data, such as single singleton analysis, um, single um, heterozygous variant in the autosomal recessive uh, genes, and complex alleles. Uh, another situation that can affect auto-analysis is the weak phenotype evidence that includes uh, either atypical phenotype or the non-oming uh, gene of unknown significance. So auto analysis can pick up on due diagnosis. So after seeing the um, the performance of imaging analysis, we started on um, doing a more comprehensive work on trying to implement um, this platform in our clinical lab. So we did. Um, uh, extensive validation using another 60 cases um, and based on that 60 cases we developed um, our review SOP. Um, by working with imaging team we did extensive uh, workflow customization um, and also the interface um, customization in order to fit our lab's um, needs. Uh, and finally, um, after launch, we did side-by-side um, -side run on 50 cases with our old analysis and the new uh, imaging analysis to compare the results. And in all cases, um, the results are consistent. So this is our current workflow in our lab um, to uh, use the uh, um, automated analysis. So the sequencing and bioinformatics um, calling was done at Beta Genetics. Um, and then um, the AI analysis was done in imaging, which gave us um, first tier of 10 variants called most likely, and the second tier 100 variants called candidates. Um, and in addition to that, we performed um, independent um, beta genetics preset filtering um, to complement those um, auto analysis. And all those variants um, still under through the manual review um, of the scientists as well as the lab directors. And finally, the reporting was done at Beta Genetics. So um, up to October this year, um, we have analyzed about 334 cases. And uh, uh, looking at the diagnosis rate, uh, we are able to achieve 29% of diagnosis rate in both singleton cases and trio cases. And this diagnosis rate is consistent with the previously published uh, West cohort from uh, other US reference labs. So lastly, um, we look at the possibilities to use AI system to do the um, large-scale case reanalysis. As we all know that in, as in the reference lab, as we accumulated more and more um, cases throughout the years, uh, it, it is very labor intensive to uh, manually assess those um, historic cases. So in order to um, speed up the process, uh, Imagine developed uh, a new model um, to assign a solved unsolved probability score to each of the cases. So that score will um, give out um, the probability whether the case will be solved um, by the West analysis. So um, we apply the model to the uh, 334 um, production cases. And in the figure you see is on the axis, axis is the number of cases ranking by the um, probability score from the lowest to the highest. So the lowest means the case is more likely to be unsolved and the high score means the case is more likely to be solved. So if we look at the bottom um, quartile of the cases from zero to 0.5, 2.5 uh, of the score, um, there are only 5% of the cases uh, that is solved and 95% of the cases are unsolved um, based on the manual review. And if you look at the top um, quartile cases, 77% of the cases are indeed solved um, based on the manual review. So we are currently uh, working with imaging to see how we can best utilize the model um, to do the reanalysis and the, um, how we can implement that in, in our clinical workflow. So with that, um, 
to summarize our clinical um, production experience, imaging uh, auto analysis has been validated, customized, and integrated into um, our clinical axon review at Baylor uh, Genetics. We still do currently do the two-step manual review uh, in order to ensure um, our um, axon quality. Um, the diagnosis rate in 334 clinical cases is about 29%. That is in range of the previous manual review cohorts. And currently, uh, we are looking to explore options to do um, more automated um, analysis on for case reanalysis. And that's it. Thank you. Everyone.